<sighs> Why? Do you know how hard it is to write a script when you're stuck in a hole a mile deep? Yeah, you didn't consider that, did you? About a year or so ago, a friend of mine once proposed an interesting theory. The current Western games industry is headed towards another crash, similar to the infamous one from decades prior. Now, that theory was immediately met with scorn and ridicule, and we've since strung them up and burned them at the stake for purporting such an asinine scenario. But that notion intrigued me, and considering the events that have happened since that discussion, I can only see such thoughts being amplified even more. Are those big fellas headed towards another crash? Are they more properly equipped to deal with such a crash than they were back then? Could a crash of that magnitude even be repeated in today's market? Are we currently experiencing a crash and we don't even realize it? Was it never our fault this whole time and we just have to let go of those we've lost to move on even though we really don't want to? Well, I feel the only way we can get definitive answers to these questions is by examining the crash that started it all. Which, considering it was likely the first big game controversy to have ever occurred, has been well documented and covered to death since then. And if you're looking for another big in-depth analysis here, you're gonna be disappointed. I wanted to tackle this subject in a different manner than I normally do with controversies. Or should I say, a different perspective. Like the perspective from one of the several up-and-comers in that era who fell victim to the crash. And there's only one way we can achieve this. It was the 80s, after all. You got at least three-fourths of your life to go. That's three more lifetimes to you. So don't blow it. Don't do drugs. If you're doing it, stop it. Get some help. Everyone here? Okay, let's let's get this meeting started. I I'm not tweaked, Martha. Stop asking that. So there's this trend happening. Uh this is a really popular trend. Bigger than books, it's it's bigger than TV, bigger than movies, bigger than Jesus! As my old friend Johnny Lemon once used to say, rest his soul, video games. Those arcade spots are hopping and those home consoles ain't stopping. And it's all thanks to those fuck faces, I mean geniuses, at Atari. As you may know, a couple years ago, they finally figured out how to make a system that wasn't another Pong clone via the Atari Video Computer System, aka the Atari 2600. It had swappable cartridges, full color, all the perks any of those dipshits could want. Fairchild may have done it first, but Atari were there better and the selection of games they crafted for the system, including some of the first arcade ports, was mwah, magnificent. So with all this, I bet you're wondering, how do we get a slice of that pie? Well, I'm happy you asked. Allow me to introduce to you the Even Machiven. It's got all the features any of those old 2600 do, but what will make it stand out is how it is three feet long and these cartridges weigh <laughs> 50 pounds. This is so we can fill up all the shelf space in all those stores, and they'll have no choice but to sell them in order to make room for more of them. Now, I know the $5,000 price tag is a little bit higher than our competition, but it's the 80s, fellas. It's the era of opulence and consumerism. Everyone's gonna buy this crap. You will see that in one year's time, we will be on top of the world.
Okay, friends, family, it has been exactly one year's time, and we have sold a grand total of one Mishivans. Uh, th 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 thanks, Mom. Okay, okay, I might have slightly overestimated our profits here, but I wasn't the only one to do that. Have you seen all those other consoles going around? You've got the ones whose names we still, I mean, took inspiration from. Uh, Mattel's Mate Intellivision and c c c c c c Clicko's Clickovision. But then you have the sequels to the Magnavox's system and, and the Fairchild Channel F2. Oh, and of course, Atari had their own sequel too, the fucking 5200. And then we have the more obscure shit, like the, the Bali Astrocade, the Arcadia 2001, the APB microcomputer system. And then the Vectrix. Even I don't know what this is. I bought one and I, I can't figure this shit out. Yes, I know, Martha, they sold better than Bashiva you don't have to keep pointing that out. But let us not be discouraged. Just because we made the small error of not having any games made for our system doesn't mean we can't mount a comeback. And luckily, I have here a small list of ideas for the kinds of games that will go perfectly with a machine. Won't take me too long to get through, but just in case. Okay, all right, so the things with these games, right, this is uh, like made by one or two guys, and for a good while, those guys were either with the console publishers themselves, or taken from the wonderful world of freelance, I'm sorry, freelance programmers. Either way, those companies paid them as little as possible and raked in all the profits. Now, of course, we know what route we're going to take, but I do have to warn you about um, this little thing that could happen. Four of Atari's best designers weren't very satisfied with the system in place and their greedy asses wanted more money and proper acknowledgement for their work. It's, it's crazy, isn't it? What's crazier though is that Atari had just fallen under new management who had only cared about the former and didn't understand or even give a shit about the latter, so those folks didn't get jack and they just left. Now, I would have kept their asses there forever through a binding contract they couldn't understand, and I even suggest that Atari hire a couple of Mongolian hitmen to kidnap their families and prevent them from making games ever again, because I knew exactly what was coming by using my big, bulbous, bing-bong brain. Of course, because they didn't listen to me, those fellas ended up making their own game development company independent of any console publisher. And they also called it Activision, of all things. But Atari was not going to take this shit lying down, so they went and sued their sorry asses. Claiming those four had stolen trade secrets and violated a non-disclosure agreement through this new venture. I suggested the Mongolian hitman thing again, but I think they started ignoring my calls. But I, I, I don't care, I was in their corner this whole time. And I was waiting for this to explode and for Activision to get pounded into the ground. And yet, apparently, it was too frivolous and petty and desperate to make it seem like Atari had any ground to stand on. So those asswipes took the pussy route and opted to settle with Activision out of court. And that set a horrible precedent. Because now, anyone can make games for these consoles. Board game publishers, TV studios, movie studios, PhD holding physicists who thought they'd give the whole video game thing a try because they were just fascinated with the technology. And don't forget the highly respectable business folk who thought there was an untapped pornographic market. And once Coleco and Mattel realized that the 2600 was the most popular console for this generation, they started making games for that system as well as their own 2600. So now there's just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these games lining these shelves across department and electronic stores nationwide. Which means we have more than enough ideas to keep stealing. You know, I've always considered myself a unique specimen in this market, so I wanted to stand out in the best way possible. So may I present to you our first 
and the only game the Meshivan really needs. The official Meshivan video game. It is the simplest serotonin producer that anyone could ask for. You just push one button on the 10 foot long controller and you win. It's that easy. We're even developing an accessory that allows players to hook up electrical prods through their ear holes and into their brains so that when they hit the button, it's an instant or I uh, again, it, it's it's still in development, but we are sure that those fuckers will buy it and our console because those dumb shit customers will buy anything. I just ask for one good thing to happen to this company. For someone other than a blood relative to buy this crap. And nothing happens. I don't understand. Those fuckers buy anything. And even worse, it looks like Atari has fucking goofed up the whole market. Who would have thought a terrible port of Pac-Man and a terrible game based off the E.T. movie would have bombed horribly? I knew it was a bad idea. I, I just knew it was a horrible, horrible idea. But... They just wouldn't listen to me. With all these unsold games, all these companies shutting down, all this money being lost and not siphoned to us. And the funny thing is, it's not like this is the first time this has happened, because the first generation had a glut of Pong consoles that just clogged up the market and got to a point where no one would buy them anymore. And the only reason that probably won't get brought up as much is because it's Pong and not a fat alien. But that's in the past, as are all our mistakes, and the bottom line is, we probably should have just gone to home computers instead. That's the business that's booming real hard in the wake of this shit. Well, at least our stock in Activision has gone up since they went public, so maybe we can try to weather this storm. Okay, fuckers, we're gonna survive this. Just because all our engineers starved themselves to death testing that electrical probe accessory doesn't mean we can't mount the best comeback those cunts have ever seen. You know, this this line of work is all about perspective. One could say the even machiven and the decisions behind it were a complete failure. Or one could say the console was ahead of its time and its mechanics will be incorporated in some way 10, 20, 30 years down the line. Yeah, well, even after going bankrupt, losing my job, losing my home, losing my pants, I was still able to bear witness to the aftermath of the big crash of 1986. We lost so much money! The US may have taken the brunt of that crash, but the effects have lingered for so, so many years. Yo. Computers and arcades thrived while the console game died. And for a while it seemed like nothing would save it. And then those goddamn Japanese came along. It would appear, seeing that crash happen in real time from the comfort of their own expensive homes, motivated a humble games company there, whose console of their own had taken the country by storm, to take it upon themselves to revive what we had destroyed. It also seemed like they thought the public was extremely stupid, I mean wary of the term video game console, so they branded it here as the Nintendo Entertainment System, with the innovative front-loading control deck that people could insert game packs into. I mean, it's not like there was any difference between how this and any second generation console worked, for God's sakes. But I suppose the retailers missed that whole millions of consoles sold part with the original system, so I, they, they need a little bit more convincing. Nintendo also had the smart idea to integrate a method that would prevent any old schmuck from making games for their system. So yeah, a lot of smart decisions on their part. It looked like it was gonna go great. And there have only been 200,000 units sold. <laughs> well, it was a good try. I even offered my own services to them, pitched that electro thing again. But it appears I was just too good for them. Well, we'll see who has the last laugh at-
So with that history lesson completed, let's circle back to the original question. Will we ever see another crash in the Western games industry occur? Just like this one? No. Okay, but actually taking this seriously for a second. I do not believe we will see a games crash occur in this market in this exact same manner in this era. And that is because, in case you didn't know, the video games industry has grown and evolved in a myriad of ways during these past 40 years and has now established itself as one of the biggest entertainment sectors in the world, to the point where most of the issues that caused the original crash are no longer a concern. Too many consoles? Well, it's only been the big three for these past few decades, even though you do have PC games, which are arguably just as popular as are those dang mobile games. Too many games? It's a fun place. Uh, well, yeah, but now there's an even larger variety of games to choose from that can fit any one person's preferences, from the hardcore players to the casual crowd. And for what it's worth, quality control has improved as most of the actual trash clogging up that initial market has now been relegated to the mobile market and can be safely ignored. The biggest factor though, and what a potential crash might come down to, is that consumer confidence. And you don't need to be a cynic to proclaim that this aspect has been all over the place, or that a fair amount of it is quite negative. Something to keep in mind though is that much of the issues dealing in that area are very similar to issues that you would see in other industries. A bunch of greedy corporations utilizing an underpaid staff to make a bunch of big over budget projects that need to be done under high stress and crunch periods. Many of those higher ups taking advantage of their higher up status and doing several terrible things that often doesn't lead to punishment and many of the games being pumped out by these studios, especially as of recent, feeling sterile and unimaginative according to those audiences. These are the general gripes one could possibly have with the Western games industry, but a lot of this can be applied to the Eastern industry as well, or the independent scene. And let us not forget a lot of the recent developments, such as the rampant acquisition of studios by those greedy corporations, and the closure of many high-ranking studios either through these corporations or through spontaneous combustion. But at the end of the day, as with those other industries, or any big major market, what it comes down to is the big money. Big money goes around the world. Big money underground. Big money got a mighty voice. Big money make no sound. And currently, the industry has a lot of that big money. I understand the sentiment of seeing how the industry stands at this moment and expecting it to eventually come crashing down one way or another. I'm not particularly happy with any of the stuff that's been happening as of late either, but the term crash implies a, a total breakdown, a full stop, complete and utter dismantlement, and something like that would not happen so easily. Nor would it be an easy thing to predict, with so many factors at play. Honestly, with just how much the industry changes and evolves at a moment's notice, and the, and the fact that the Western markets reached peaks that have never been seen before as of now, it's impossible for any random schmuck, including myself, to gauge this. I can't even imagine what something of that magnitude would entail. I mean, the aftermath could be something similar to the crash from 40 years ago, but the circumstances just are not the same. But what I can say with some level of confidence is that this is certainly a possibility, as is the possibility of the industry just shifting towards another trend, or new companies being formed from the ground up that could overtake the big ones somehow, or just nothing changing at all and we get stuck with Fortnite and Madden forever. Anything can happen in this industry. But a massive crash on the level of the 1983 one? Personally, that's pretty low on my radar. But I guess we shall see what the future brings. Okay, cool, we got that out of the way. Um, let's see how well this ages in the next few years. 
But, uh, more importantly, how the hell am I gonna get out of this hole? This, uh, big hole. This big, big hole. You know how hard it is to come up with a contrived ending gag to continue the overarching story you're making up on the fly that connects these videos and only serves to alienate potential viewers, but you stick in anyway because it amuses you? No, you didn't, did you? Also, this wasn't coke, it was powdered up expired Tylenol. Which you shouldn't be pulverizing and snorting anyway because...